Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and Stolf, the developer of my campaign manager of choice, Scabbard, has asked me to demonstrate some of the new features coming to the platform, specifically the City Builder. Let's roll it. Hi, Future Wes here. I'm recording this several days after I recorded most of the material for this video. I uh, wanted to give you some full disclosure. When I first did this video, it was as a favor to the developer. The only thing I got access to was to the alpha of the city builder so I could do the demonstration for you. Uh, since that time, Stoff has seen fit to give me a bump in my tier for my Scabbard subscription. It's about $50 more a year for that. And has also given me access to the closed beta of City Builder. Now, until this point, the only way to create different sections inside a city or a town would be to create subregions in the connections window. And that worked okay. But in that older setup, now called the classic interface, every different element of a city or a town was its own distinct page, and you had to keep bouncing back and forth between pages in order to get anything done. Well, Stealth has improved this with a tree interface and added different elements to creating a town or city, like districts. Let's take a look. When you are using a campaign that has City Builder enabled, when you select one of your towns or villages or cities, you're going to be brought to this view. And you can see right away, this is a little bit different. In the classic view, which you can still get to by clicking this button here, uh, everything was its own page. And if you wanted to open up more than one thing in a town, well, you had to open up a whole bunch of tabs and that could get a little tedious. In this new view, which is called the tree view, when you click on something, it's going to change the information over here on the right pane. And here's the tree over on the left. So right now I have rad selected, and it just says it's a port city in Krythar with Wizards College. This is a default campaign for the demo of new features inside Scabbard, by the way, in case you were wondering. So in Rad right now, we have the Halfling Quarter. This icon here is just the default artwork for a city district inside any kind of town or city. Uh, and what I want to do is create a new district because we said this was a port city. And so we want to give it a port district. Well, let's click on that. That little downward triangle there will bring up the new district dialog. I'm going to click on that and we'll get this dialog. There are some defaults that are up here. City district for any generic district, a port district, a temple district. And if you want to create your own, you can click on other place or category. I know in one of my campaigns where I am trying this out a little bit, I created a museum district for one of my towns saying that's where all the museums are, a little bit touristy. Anyway, we're creating a port, so we'll click on that. And then we'll go down to the name box, and there's this interesting token here that's a 20-sided die. Well, let's click on that. What this is going to do is going to get AI working. It's going to see what type of district we're talking about, and it's going to create a list of names that are randomly generated based on the criteria of what this area is. Freehaven Port is the first, and if you click on it again, it'll generate another name. Let's take a look. Windward Port, Harbor's Edge, Waterfront Quay, High Bay Anchorage. Oh, I kind of like that. Let's keep that. So this is the port city in Rad, or the port district in Rad. And uh, now when we click Create, it's going to show up in our tree view. Let's open up Rad. Go to City Districts, and there's High Bay Anchorage. Now, if I click on this, it's going to change that right pane to what we just put in, Port District in Rad, and there's the default icon. If I want to edit anything in that page, I can do that here. And I'll just give it a regular description. So it's a rowdy area with lots of pubs and supply shops, as well as warehouses, as you might expect inside a port district. But there's also another tab over here for secrets, just like in the main editor. I click on that, we can say there is a, an end of the world cult operating in this area. We'll 
bringing that back in a little bit, but this is secret. It won't show up on the main page. So let's save. There's my general description. Secrets do not show up on here. If you want to do that, you have to click on the classic view, and I'm going to do that now. So in classic view, as I said earlier, everything was its own page. And if you wanted to open up more than one item, you had to open them up in their own separate tabs or worse, windows. But who does that anymore? Anyway, in the new tree view, you can select more than one thing or have that whole list there and click back and forth between them, and it will only populate on the right. But as we showed, you don't have access to the full editor. So you go to classic view for that. And here is the old classic view here. There's my read more. I click on that and I get my secrets to appear down at the bottom. Also shows that it is a subregion of RAD and that its place category is port district. So that old connection of subregion is still functional even inside the city builder view. You're just getting a visual representation of how those districts and buildings and neighborhoods are all related one to another. So what I'm going to do here is we'll go to edit. This brings up the full editor that people who are using Scabbard currently are used to. And I make my edits here and I make some more edits down in secrets and I click save. And what you'll find is that we're going to go back to the city builder view. For cities, this will now be the default. And there is my tree again. I can click on something else and it will take me to that without having to open up a new page. Very, very nice. Now, what I want to show you is how the AI that works behind the name generator will take into account things like your district and even the name of your district. We're going to show that with the halfling district that has already been populated inside RAD. Let's take a look. So you can see that this is the halfling quarter. And in the description or the short description, you have where the halfling of RAD live. Now, the AI that gives you the randomized names can work with that modifier no matter where it is inside the description, whether it's in the main description, the short description, or the title, doesn't really matter. It doesn't need it in both places. When it sees it, it's going to take halfling into account. So let's take a look. We're going to click on this. Now, instead of getting a new district, we're going to get a new neighborhood or building. And let's go to in tavern, halfling. And we're going to click on this random name generator again. It's going to have to go through its process. The silver tankard sounds very halfling. Let's see what else it came up with. The halfling's hearth, the rusty keg. I don't think halflings like rusty kegs. The copper mug, I like that. Foaming mug, oh, that sounds very halfling. Uh, I think of green dragon when I think of the foaming mug. Uh, known for its foaming root beer. There we go, halflings and root beer, that just goes together. We'll click create. And now that's going to show up under the halfling quarter, the foaming mug. Click on that. And there we go. Very nice. Now, High Bay Anchorage, we said had lots of pubs. So why don't we create something in there? We'll click on here. Click that down facing triangle. There's the new neighborhood or building prompt. And now we're going to go over here and we'll create an inn or a tavern. And this is now a harbor district. Let's see what types of names it comes up with. The Salty Sailor. Oh, that's very, very nautical. Let's see what else it's got. The Rusty Nail. Poseidon's Palace. Oh, that sounds a little bit like Atlantic City. Anyway, let's keep going. Kraken's Catch. High Bay Harbor Master. The Mariner's Memory. Oh, I love that. And I don't know how to spell mozzarella. I never have. So we'll use the spell checker, which is the default for your browser. And I'll change that there. Known for its mozzarella sticks. And we'll go and hit create. Now, this is now going to be here in High Bay Anchorage. We're going to click on that. Known for its mozzarella sticks. Let's edit that, shall we? So it's a favorite location for sailors in port. It is located far out on the largest pier. Kind of a nice idea, but let's give it a secret because we said that there is an end of the world cult that's operating here. What if the proprietor is the head of the cult? 
I give it a little bit of a secret. Folks don't really know what's going on, and he's very friendly, and he's recruiting people to help end the world with him. That would be kind of cool. A nice idea for a plot twist. Let's save that. And there we have our description that we just put in. If we want to view the secrets, we have to go to the classic view, uh, just like with the other things that we showed. Very nice. Now, what is this city missing? Let's see. We have a population district. We have a port district. We do not have a temple or a religious center. Folks need those services in fantasy worlds. So let's click on new district and we'll create a temple district. Let's randomize that and we'll see how the names change again. Halcyon Heights. Let's see what else it comes up with. Sanctum of Serenity, Heavenly Plateau, Celestial Gate Glades, Radiant Crags, Elysian Valley. Now, here's the cool thing. When it comes up with a name, you're not stuck with it. You can still go in there and edit. And this is not a very religious town. It's a port, a little rowdy. So they don't have a whole lot of religion, but they want a little bit. So maybe they have an, al an alley instead of a, a full district. It's just one small area. And these folks all kind of exist in one small little alley. Everybody wants them in one place. They know where to keep their eyes on them. Let's create that. And now they're going to need a temple. So the Elysian Alley, let's click on this. Downward facing triangle, new neighborhood or building. Oh, wait a minute. It's not one of the main icons up at the top. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to other place or category. Now, I've already created this. A healing temple. You can see how that populates out. I could create a new one and it would ask me for a short description and create a whole new category for me. I've already created this for myself. So there's a healing temple. And that word healing and the fact that it is a temple is now going to change how the AI goes about generating its names. Let's click on this and we'll see what comes up with. Valley of the Ancients, nah. Fountain of Well-Being, maybe. Hall of Halls of Miracles, hmm. Healer Sanctuary, okay. The Temple of Health, Sacred Waters of Renewal, the Oracle of Renewal, the Cauldron of Renewal, Hall of Healing Light. Oh, I like that one. So, Place of Rest and Renewal. We'll create that. And there we are. All your different districts are out there. And it's just easy to bounce them back and forth between them. Very nice. So the city builder interface is really well done. I am very looking forward to seeing it become available to all the users of Scabbard. And if you have not yet tried Scabbard out or you're on the fence of trying it out, features like this, which are on the way, should be a good encouragement to check it out. At least give it a try. There is nothing as fast or as simple or as powerful out there to help manage your campaigns as Scabbard. There's a reason why I'm a paying subscriber. Future Wes here. I'm back again just to give you an update on where the city builder stands. Since I recorded my original material, it has entered closed beta. You do have to pay to access it, and that is an additional charge over your Scabbard subscription. It cost about $22.49 for the first year. That's 50% off the price. After that, it will bump up to the full price of the City Builder, and that's going to be in addition to whatever tier that you are on for Scabbard. There is also going to be coming out a higher level tier that's going to have all the add-ons for Scabbard. And that's like City Builder and Adventure Builder and all these other tools that Stoff is working on. And that will be at a reduced rate than if you purchased them all separately. So if you're interested in this, $22.49 for a closed beta, it's not a whole lot. And I do think it's worth it. It's a really nice tool. Next up on my channel, I am going to be looking at another Cypher System game, Numenera which is really, really fantastic. Until we see each other again, folks, happy playing, everyone.